Hunt. Thousands of Rohingya Muslims are continuing to flee violence in Myanmar. Nearly 600,000 Rohingya have crossed the border and some 15,000 are stranded there with limited food and water in overcrowded refugee camps. Clive Meary with our broadcasting partners at BBC News reports on the harrowing conditions along the border. Every breath is a struggle for Mohammed Ibrahim. Six months old and fighting pneumonia. He's terribly weak and malnourished. He has just a 50-50 chance of seeing out another day. A sense of sorrow hangs heavy in the air in this clinic in Bangladesh. 80% of the patients are Rohingya Muslim refugees and many are malnourished children, the weakest of the weak. The mother of 18-month-old Moshta Kima summed up the nightmare of so many Rohingya women. We had to run from our village, but we had so little to eat. Then when we managed to get food, I couldn't feed my child. She's so sick, but if God wishes it, she'll survive. Working with the local staff here is Ian Cross, a former GP from Leicester. Tears come to my eyes sometimes. It's um, it's it's dreadful. You just do what you can, you know. You, you, in a way, I'm lucky that I'm a doctor. I've got my hands and my tools. I can I can help to make people better. If I wasn't able to do that, I'd feel so frustrated and I'd feel even worse. But when you're hard at work, it you can cope with. It is a depressing truth in this crisis that close to 60% of the more than half a million Rohingya Muslims who've escaped Myanmar are children and teenagers. And they've seen some terrible things like Havaja Khatun. She's called this refugee camp in Bangladesh home for almost two weeks. Her story of the night she had to flee Myanmar is depressingly familiar. Villages torched and her mother dying in the flames. They're killing all the Muslims, she told me, slaughtering innocent Rohingyas. We've always been treated as lesser people in our own land. Now they want to finish us off. But dangers lurk in exile too. Young women like Havaja are vulnerable. And the chance of children falling into the hands of sexual predators or exploited for their labor is ever present. The families here are have nothing. They are trying to survive on a daily basis and some of them at some point might be tempted to give away one of their child for domestic work. You know, not going to school, sometimes sexual abuse. So the, the, the risks are high. But there is light amidst all the gloom. Children in the camps are getting vaccinated against cholera and other diseases. There's even a chance to watch cartoons. And youngsters are never allowed to feel ashamed of who they are. In this class, they're reciting nursery rhymes from their homeland. But some will never return. The day after we filmed Mohammed Ibrahim, we were told he died. He was buried in a tiny grave before